A few days before Christmas last year, my mother severely fractured her ankle. It was so bad that the bone was sticking out. Ouch. Now, take a moment to gather your stomach after picturing that image. Naturally, ever since then, I've been thinking about a lot of different things. One of those things being my parents getting older and not being able to take as good of care of themselves as they used to. And the other is this idea of staying fit and healthy as we age. And that's when I thought of training for life. And it has a double meaning. First off, training for life preparing for everything that light throws at you. Simple things like tripping hazards, going up and down stairs, carrying in the groceries, hanging Christmas lights on your house, as well as maybe some crazier things like running away from an active shooter or attacker, escaping a tornado or a zombie apocalypse, carrying a loved one who's unconscious or has a broken ankle on a hiking trail, or fighting off a grizzly bear. Now, some of these might sound absolutely ridiculous, and they are. But when the unexpected happens, you won't think it's fun. You'll be thankful that you prepared for anything and everything that life has to throw at you. The second meaning of training for life is that it's a lifelong commitment. Training for life also means committing to lifelong fitness. The human body is built on perishable skills. If you don't use it, you lose it. So how do you train for life? Let's uncover some key aspects of training for life. First up is movement. Now movement encompasses a lot. Things like proper movement patterns, stretching and mobility and flexibility ability, resistance training, as well as cardio and conditioning. And remember, the goal is to be prepared for all that life can throw at us. Looking sexy as fuck on the beach is a nice side effect, but the main goal is to be healthy and move through life comfortably and confidently. To be athletic, whether you're walking down a grocery aisle or shredding down a powder covered mountain. So first, you have to be able to move correctly. I would start by addressing any stiffnesses, any imbalances, and training in lengthened positions. Incorporate static stretching, foam rolling, and movements that train muscles in their lengthened positions. I would also work on your cardio base. Here I'd focus on volume, time or distance, not necessarily speed. We wanna build a big and wide base here. Taking this initial phase seriously is going to set you up for success down the road. Now, as for food, you are what you eat, but more importantly, you are what you eat, digest, absorb, and assimilate. So I was thinking of this idea of food, of quantity and quality when it comes to food. So when talking about quantity, this refers to the amount of food, right? The calories and the macros. And if you want to get shredded and look sexy as fuck on the beach, this might be all that you would maybe look at. And in the past, I've been guilty of doing this as well. Now, that being said, these need to be dialed in accordingly, your calories and your macros, the right quantity, right? Eating the right amount of calories and getting plenty of protein. Now, as for quality, you see, you can hit your calories calories and your macros by eating Slim Jims and drinking Mountain Dew. But that's not the point. The point is to thrive, not just survive. And so aim for whole, minimally processed foods for the majority of what you eat. This is going to nourish your body and it's going to make you feel your best from the inside out. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't eat anything from a box or fast food once in a while or even going out to dinner. It just means that that stuff should be kept to a minimum, a little, little treat, if you will. So this encompasses all the other important aspects, sleep, both quality and quantity stress management, mental health, having a purpose in life, picking up a hobby in all your relationships. Now, neglecting these means that you're not truly training for life. This stuff is just as important, if not more important than the training and the nutrition. Training the mind and staying consistent with it might even be harder than training the body. Training for life should be fun and enjoyable. It should be sustainable. It should push you and be difficult at times, but you should start to feel better week after week. And if not, then something's wrong and you should probably reassess. Today, this idea of training Training for life is more essential than ever. Nearly one in three adults, 30.7%, are overweight. More than two in five adults, or 42.4%, have obesity. And one in 11 adults, or 9.2%, have severe obesity. Now, what happens when the unexpected occurs and you fall into one of these categories? How many of the people in those categories are truly thriving? My guess is close to zero. Some might think that they are, but they probably have no idea what thriving actually feels like. So get out there and train for life. Take this seriously because your life depends on it. It, literally. And at some point, someone else's life might depend on you too. Trust me, you're going to want to be ready if that time ever comes.